Okay, so uh, moving on to task A3. Uh, in task A3, we will be dealing with uh, web authoring where we, where we will be required to uh, create a web page. Okay, so let's go from the beginning. In task A3, it first says open a new word processing document, enter these details in the header, and then it says save this document as task A3. Okay, so let's go into our folder, right click and say new word document. And the name of this document is going to be task A3. And as soon as I open it, I'm going to be heading for the header. And over here, task A3, your name, your candidate number, and your center number. Okay, so the header portion is complete. I'm going to close the header and footer. And now what I'm going to do is, it says Sam wants you to create two web pages. Okay, so guys, when you, if you, I mean, having the physical paper with you, try to take a pencil and underline these important uh, words okay or these important uh, yeah words okay sam wants you to create two web pages okay so keep in mind there are two web pages that you have to create for the tsr website content for the web pages is stored in the file website okay so do check whether you have the file website with you yes we do have the file and when you do open it up you can see the content is provided so the page title has been given to you introductory text has been given to you and the content for the ski lessons page has also been given to you. Okay, it says over here, he wants you to create these two link pages. Okay, so something else that is important to know is that both these pages need to be linked to each other. Okay, both web pages must be saved as .html. Okay, create the homepage based on this design. Okay, so for this particular question, I'm going to be using Adobe Dreamweaver CS6. Okay, so let me zoom in. And uh, when it comes to creating a web page, I like to create it in the form of a table. Okay, so if we look at this layout in the form of a table, we would automatically see that we have one row, two rows. This could be another row, three rows. Uh, this could be another fourth row. And we could have a fifth row. Okay, so we can have five rows over here. Company name, page title, that is two. Then up to here three then here four and then here five yeah we can have five rows and if you look at it in terms of columns this would be one column this would be another column and this would be another column okay so we can take it as five rows three columns okay so let's go up let's go into dreamweaver now so i'll be using cs6 okay i'll be using adobe dreamweaver cs6 it's a heavy program, so it's going to take a few seconds to load up. So I'm going to go with a blank HTML page. Okay, new HTML. Okay, so when I click on that, um, still loading. Yes, so now Dreamweaver has loaded up. It has gone into a blank web page, and right now it's in code view. Okay, so I'm going to be using design view for now, because right now I have a lot of designing work to be done. It can be done in code, but I'm more comfortable in design view. So I'm going to open up design view. So I'm first going to get the structure that they have given me. I'm first going to get that structure. Okay, where I told you we have five rows and uh, three columns. I'm going to first get that layout or that structure in place first. So let's come to insert table. Uh, where do you get table? Okay, and over here, uh, we're going to be saying that we want five rows and three columns. And the width of my table is going to be 100%. The reason I'm keeping it at 100% is that no matter on what type of a screen you view this web page, it would fit the entire web page. Whether you look at it on a smartphone or a tablet or a laptop or a TV screen, it doesn't matter. Since the width is 100%, which means full screen, this web page is going to fill is going to fit the entire screen. Okay, which is why I'm going to keep it at 100%. Next, I do not want my table to have any borders, okay? I do not want any borders to be visible. So I'm gonna put it at zero. However, before I click the OK button, let me go into the question paper and see, is there anything else that I need to keep in mind in terms of the structure of the page? So company name, page title, introductory text, all that comes later on. In terms of the structure, they haven't said anything about borders and width, they haven't said. So I'm going to choose my own values, which is 100%, which means fit entire screen and border thickness zero means my table is not going to have any borders. Okay. Now, when I click on, okay, 
you can see a table has appeared and you can see you can see there are dotted borders these dotted borders are only visible in design view when you go into live view or when you open this up with google chrome when you view it on the web browser these borders would not be there okay let me show you look when i go into live view can you see the tables borders are not visible because i put zero okay it's only visible when we are in design view okay right so let me start merging the cells and all that accordingly so you can see the first row first column second column are merged so that's exactly what i am also going to do first column second column i'm going to select them right click table merge cells so control all the m is the shortcut key okay so that's done second row is also going to be merged completely right click table merge cells so over here, if you want, just for your reference, you can just put here company name. Uh, later on, you can come and put the correct details. Below company name, we have page title. Then next, uh, over here, you can see the uh, first, the second row is done. Now, third row, third row, first column, I'm going to keep it as it is. However, the... Uh, as you can see, the third row's second column and the fourth row's second column have been merged. I hope this makes sense to you. This is the third row's second column and fourth row's second column have been merged. So I'm going to merge those two, which is over here. Control Alt M. There you go. And I'm going to type here introductory text comes over here. Okay. Then also, as you can see, these two have also been merged. So I'm going to merge them also, which is going to be the first column of the third row and the fourth row. Okay. I'm going to merge these two as well. Control Alt M. And over here, I'm going to put home and ski lessons. Home ski lessons. Okay. The width of each cell, we can adjust it later on. For now, you can just keep it as it is. And you can see the entire last row has also been merged. Okay, the entire last row has also been merged. So let me do that. Control Alt M. And over here, we are going to have the contact details. Isn't it there? Please contact, on, contact us on email address. Okay, so I'll, I'll attend to that later. Over here, we have one image. And over here, we have another image. Okay, so for now, I'm just labeling my table so that i know later on where everything should go okay right okay use these html elements so the company name should be h1 should be a heading one okay so let us go and put the company name the name of the company was guys let's go to the scenario and be sure about it the ski run okay so the company name should be the ski run so i'm gonna change this to the ski run okay and this has to be heading number one okay so you can right click over here you can come to paragraph format and you can say you want this to be heading number one. There's also something else to uh, notice, which is that uh, <clears throat> over here, guys, over here, if you look, can you see everything? You can see both of these have been center aligned. OK, so let us also follow the same thing. So you can right click over here. You can say align and you can say center. OK, so it goes into the center. This is a page title. So page title is going to be home. Okay, because right now we are creating the home page now. This is the first page we are creating. Okay, let's just check over here. What did they say the title should be? Oh, sorry, sorry. This page title should be all about the ski run. My bad. Okay, the page title should be all about the ski run. Okay. So let's copy and paste that. And it should also be center aligned. Okay. Uh, the page title should be H2 and it should be underlined. Okay, so let me show you how we do that. It should be H2 and underlined. So we can right click, or oh, I didn't properly right click. Select it and then right click. And then you can say uh, this uh, paragraph format, it should be H2 and it should also be underlined. So you come to style and you say you want it to be underlined. Okay, so that's also done. The next thing that it tells us is the introductory text should remain as a paragraph. OK, so let's go and copy and paste the introductory text, OK, which is over here. Let's simply select it. Control C, shortcut key to copy. Come over here. Control V, shortcut key to paste. OK, that's done. 
right there. Okay, I'm going to adjust the width. This side is a little too much. The left side is a little too much. So make it a little smaller. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so the introductory text has also been inserted. The next thing it says is, use the following color scheme. Okay, so before I move on to this area, uh, before I move, okay, let's move on to this area video. So it says the background color should be blue gray and they have given us the code as well, okay? So how we get the background color is, what we do is we come to modify and we come to page properties, okay? In page properties, we have something called background color. Okay, so in background color, we simply type the code that they have given us. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste this code. Control C, Control V. I remove this bracket from here. Say okay, right? So that's the background color that they wanted us to apply. The next thing that they tell us is, guys, the text color for the introductory text should be white color. So they have specifically told that this color should only be applied for the introductory text. Okay. Now this part gets slightly confusing when you are applying a color only to one to a specific part of your web page you're applying a font color to a specific part of your web page what you need to do is you need to create a new style okay you have to create a new style and inside that style you have to give the property of font color okay let me show you how it's done okay so now what i do is i right click and i say CSS styles, okay, and I create a brand new CSS style, okay. So then the computer asks me, what's the name of this style that you are about to create? So I just give it a name as intro text or something like that, okay. Give it a name so that you can refer to it later on, okay, a meaningful name, okay. Then I click on OK. Then my computer asks me, okay, you created a CSS style called intro text. For this intro text style, what are the properties that you want to apply? Okay, so there is only one property that I want applied, which is the color. I just want only the color to become white. Okay, so when I select intro text, the font color is going to become white. That's all, nothing else. Okay, so I take white. Uh, let's go exactly how they told, how many Fs did they have? They had uh, two, four, six. We also six stick to the same thing. One, two, three. Okay, and say apply. Okay, now it's time for me to go and apply that style to the text okay so now the style has been created guys the style has been created a few seconds ago we created the style inside the style we only changed one property which was the color we made it white color now it's time for us to select the text and then apply that css style okay so now you simply right click you come to css styles and can you see intro text has now appeared okay this is the one that you just created a few seconds ago so you select it okay now do you see the property that you put for intro text has now been applied to your text. Okay, right. Uh, moving on then, it says include two appropriate images from the images folder and position them as shown in the design. One of the images must link to the ski run.net. Okay, now guys, since over here the text is also center aligned, I'm also going to keep my image center aligned. Okay, so what I'll be doing is I'll first select both of these, right click and say align center. Okay, let's first center align it and thereafter let's insert the image. Okay, so uh, let me remove this text now. The cursor is still in the center and I have to insert two suitable images. Okay, so I go to my image folder and uh, we are talking about what? We are talking about the ski run. So something to do with skiing. Let's go with the first one, control C. Come to Dreamweaver, Control V to paste it. So then my computer, Dreamweaver is reminding me, better you first save your file so that this image will have an address. I'll say, okay, I'll do that later on. Now, before I paste the image, it asks me for alternate text. So alternate text is text that would be displayed in case the image does not load, okay? So I'll simply say ski run and I'll say, okay. So the image has appeared over here, however, in the question paper, they have told me that it should be 200 pixels by 200 pixels. Okay. So let me go and click on my image. And at the bottom, you can see it's 400 by 400. Okay. So let me change it to 200. So when I make the above 200, the bottom also becomes 200. Because can you see this padlock symbol? So padlock symbol on means it's proportionally changing. When you change the width, automatically the height will also change. If the padlock is unlocked, it means you can put your own values for width and height. 
Okay, I hope you get my point. If the padlock is locked, if it's locked, uh, when you change the width, automatically height will accordingly change with it because it's locked. It will proportionally change. But if it's unlocked, you can put your own values for width and height. Okay. Right. Let me get the next image as well. Remove this text. Get the next image as well. Another one with scheme. Maybe something slightly different. Something like this maybe. So control C. Come over here. Control V. Again, reminding me to save my file. Remember, I haven't saved my file yet. Okay, all the net text again. I'll say ski run and I'll say okay. Once again, this has also this, this two should be 200 pixels by 200 pixels. So I'll change it from over here. Press enter. And since it's locked, can you see when the width changes, automatically the height will also change. Uh, one more thing that they had told us is that uh, one image must link to triple w dot the ski run dot net. So we'll go with the first image itself. It's up to you. You can select any one. So there are two ways to link the image. Basically, link means when this image is clicked, when the user clicks on this image, it will go to the website, www.theskirun.net. So method number one you can do is you can simply click on the image and here you can see you have the link. Okay, so over here you can type the address. This is method number one. Method number two is you can right click and you can say, uh, make it a link, make it a link. And over here, you can type the URL. You can say www.theskirun.net. Okay. You can do that and then click on OK. So those are two ways of creating a hyperlink. Okay. Moving on, it says include the appropriate content from the website document. We already did that. Include Sam's name and email address. Make the email address and email link. Okay. So what should we say? We should say please contact us on, or shall we say, please contact Sam on. Uh, this also has to be center aligned. As you can see in the question paper, it's center aligned. So I'm going to stick to that line center. So please contact Sam on, and the email address is what? Sam at tsr.net, Sam at tsr.net. And then what does it say for further information? Now they want us to make this email address also a hyperlink where yeah? when the user clicks on it, it will automatically go to his device's email software. His device's email software will open up and a new mail will be created. And on the two field, Sam at TSR.net will appear. So in order to create a hyperlink like that, what you have to do is guys, you have to, you, you can first select it, Sam at TSR.net, you can select it. And in the link field, in the link field, you can type mail to, mail to, M-A-I-L to, and then put a colon, okay, the two dots, colon, and then type Sam's email address, Sam at TSR.net, okay? So this is the uh, link that you're creating. So basically what happens over here is, when the user clicks on this email address, if he's using his smartphone, the email app on his smartphone will open up and a blank message will be open, will be created. And in the to field, Sam at tsr.net will be there. Okay. If he's using a laptop, whatever email software he has installed in his laptop will open up. Okay. So in order to make this an email link, you have to select the text first and then in the link field, mail to colon and then the email address. Okay. So once you're done with it, you can press enter, which means you're confirming it, okay? Right, uh, the next thing that needs to be done is, uh, so we, even though here they say to save the home page, before we do that, guys, let us quickly keep in mind that these two have to be hyperlinks, okay? But since we haven't saved the pages yet, we cannot create the hyperlinks yet. We can, but I'm not gonna do that, okay? Uh, okay, so let's go in order, let's go in order. Over here, it says save the home page as index. Okay, so let's go ahead, save as. Let's go into our folder. So my folder is over here and I'm supposed to save it as index. You don't need to put .html since you're using Dreamweaver and in Dreamweaver, you told you want an HTML document. When you save it, it will automatically put the .html for you. Okay, can you see save as type .htm, .html, all that, it will automatically put it for you. You do not have to put it, there. okay? So we have saved our first web page is saved. Okay. 